Hey guys, what's up? It's Rox here. I know it's been a long time. I've been like super busy actually with truck school and then uh, yeah, new job. So I've been like pretty much here and there and everywhere. It's been a really long journey, but let's get back into what's going on with the bikes. Right now it's raining like crazy. So as much as I would love to uh, go outside, I'm not. Um, here we go. So as you can see, we're back to your stock swing arm, no nitrous kit. Uh, still using that seat. I'm going to probably replace that uh, cushion they have there with something else. It's okay, but it needs to be better. Uh, what else did we do? I took off my AFR gauge, nitro switch here. Um, left in the map switch. That way I can run a different fuel if I want to. And power commander still in here. Other than that, it's pretty much... The same thing. We're not running GP shift anymore. It was having issues, which is kind of weird. But, well, it was just getting harder to shift, which is actually pretty normal because it's not at an exact 90 degree because they sent the wrong down. It's like a little, uh, there's a little lever here. And this thing needs to be 90 degrees like this. And the problem is it's basically never going to do that. Um, if it's even lo just a little bit off center, eventually it'll just get worse and worse and worse. So, yeah, that's a big pain. So, let's talk about why I took the swing arm off. Well, let's go take a look at it. And as you can see, my garage is a complete mess. I've been, uh, there's all the nature's kit left over. Here is why I took the swing arm off. Uh, I kept hearing and grinding, and I couldn't figure out why. And this is basically what attaches to the frame. And the chain was starting to literally dig into it. I don't know if y'all can see that, but y'all can see kind of like some grooves or channels uh, being created. And that is very dangerous because eventually that will cut into here and make it soft enough where it'll break off. And then, you know, even potentially go through like, I guess the pivot pin, which is like a giant thing that holds your swing arm to your bike. And, you know, doing what I do, that's very dangerous. You know, if it ripped through this at, you know, anything over like 80 miles per hour, it's potentially deadly. So, that being said, we're back down to the stock swing arm. Um, I'm actually going to go down the stock height, but for now, we're still lowered. It's a, definitely a pain to get it just right the way you want it, but for now, you know, we're still stock gearing and everything, and I actually did this chain myself, the swing arm myself, and all that stuff. I should have videoed it so y'all could see what, what it really takes to take this thing all apart, and it's really not that bad. I mean, the hardest thing was just getting the bolts off, really. It's a, it's a very difficult job, I guess. But, you know, that being said, I mean, the bike, the bike seems to look a lot better. I don't know. Y'all think so, but I really love the way this bike looks without it being stretched out. And it feels so much better to just ride around. I'm probably going to raise it back up to stock height so I can actually lean. Because, like, when you have it at stock height, like, it just falls over and it's ready to lean, like, perfectly. And that's just not the case right here. Like, right here, it's, you know, I have it lowered a lot. The only thing is, I think I got an air bubble in my, uh my rear brake system i don't know how it happened but it started getting harder to actually actuate the brake in the rear and I'm probably have to bleed the uh the brake on it and refill it up but that shouldn't be too hard so you know here's where i did all the work at got millions of tools by the way if y'all are ever trying to take a chain off and all that stuff and put a new one on y'all should get this tool this is the uh, pbr chain tool oh my god motion pro this is a great great um chain tool for the 520 through 530 range that thing it, it did it so simply i had another one around here that just didn't really work out very well oh, here you can see that. This is a chain breaker. It basically is the uh, the same thing. It's just not as 
It's good for pushing the pins out, but it's not good for putting them back on. You need to re-rivet it, and that uh, PBR tool will do that. So, that's pretty cool. Um, if you ever need to take the rear wheel off, uh, you know, a little car jack or whatever, just put a board on it and put it under, you know, have it on your exhaust or whatever the hell you have. Something down there that's nice and hard that's not going to bend with the weight of the bike, and that's how I did it. And that allowed me to get this stock arm off and on pretty easy. Other than that, I mean, we need to work on getting us some new fairings. Uh, we're gonna work on this right side here soon. So I'll get those fairings figured out. And then after that, who knows? Um, we're still looking at what bike I wanna get into. I'm not really sure yet. Uh, Aprilia just came out with the updated variant of the RSV4. Uh, the base model actually has an 1100cc engine in it now, so, and that's making 217 at the crank, I believe. So, that's right in line with the Ducati. So, you know, good possibility I'll end up with one of those, too. I really like a V4, and I want to try it out and see what it, you know, what it'll actually do. And maybe that's just, uh, I don't know. I just want to try something different. I wish Honda would come out with a V4 that I could ride that wasn't like 200 grand. <laughs> I want to say the RC 213V probably is a, a V4. But anyways, that being said, we're probably going to check out the RSV4 or the uh, Ducati. I know probably not this week, but maybe next week they're going to make a demo bike out of one of the new base models. So I'll probably go check that out and... I'll depend on whether I want to buy the factory or that one. And I think the factory is like 26000 or 25000 probably like twenty seven out the door. And then the uh, base model is or probably like twenty out the door. So probably right in line with what this was. Except, you know, this has the Brembo's. Or I think that one has Brembo's too. But this one has the only suspension on the front and back. So that's pretty nice. Anyways... This bad boy is going to be up for sale, or really already was. I had it at a dealership, and we're going to turn this into, hopefully, an even faster bike. Now, don't get me wrong, though. This one still is quite a monster in its own respect. It's, uh, it's faster than a lot of people thought it was going to be. That's for damn sure. And it's definitely big thanks to Paul, the tuner. You know, a lot of people I hang around with give give me shit for using him instead of other people but I'm like well nobody else is giving Honda power so why would I waste my time going with someone else <sighs> I can't really say if I like having the um, the mirrors on but it's just like a convenience thing and I can tell you the bike probably weighs like an extra like four pounds or something like that for him having them on anyways working out details here just details 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 I need to clean my garage as you can see it's kind of a fucking disaster but that being said I know it's been a really long time I haven't had any videos out in a while so I wanted to go ahead and put one out because I know it's been real quiet lately and it's literally because of my work schedule so anyways um if y'all are new here consider subscribing don't worry I'm gonna be putting out plenty of new content I put out a, a test ride on the Ducati so maybe the next thing I'll do is put out a test ride on the Aprilia and I'll tell you all my thoughts and everything on that. I'll use the um, whatever footage I get. I'll bring a Hero 9 this time. Because I'm thinking about swapping to that. Anyways, that being said, I will see you all in the next one.